Okay, David. Hello. <clears throat> hey, David. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Hey, I was able to find a way to represent uh, what I wanted to represent. So if you don't mind me jumping in uh, first. Yeah. Go for it. Great. Are we waiting on anybody else, uh, like Steve or somebody else? Um, I don't I don't know. I mean, I think we can we can get started. Um, I, mean, I think Steve should join a little later, but I, I don't think we need, need him to get going necessarily. Yeah, OK. Uh, that sounds good. Uh, let's break up the agenda. Uh, let me see what's in the agenda. Yeah, I think the first item is for us and uh, David, you and I to be aligned on the uh, on the RC one scope. And I was able to uh, what we were discussing yesterday. I was able to find a way to represent it and show what's remaining for RC one. So if you don't mind, let me share my screen and go go from there. Yep. Uh, and if somebody can mark attendance, that's great because when I'm focused here, I will not be able to mark attendance. Uh, so uh, what I did was you had some good boards here, uh, you know. Uh, so what I did was I went to exactly went to RC one not done. Yeah. RC one not done. I focused on adding a column on seeing items that we were tracking, uh, and I found a couple of items which were duplicates, some items which. Uh, which I believe we should discuss if they should that if they belong in RC one or not, and I've marked them I marked them appropriately, and then of course items which were directly from the spreadsheet which we need to close for RC one. So mm -hmm. if I start there, it's a very small list, and I think uh, with so many people working on it, it should not take too long for us to close on RC one. So this is the list. Um, if I show for items which were coming uh, from the spreadsheet for RC1 that we were tracking in the spreadsheet, assuming that to be the, uh, the complete list, and it may not be, but this is what's coming out of it. Mm -hmm. And I think if we look at it, most of the items are assigned to the right set of people. And I click through each one of them and I see people uh, planning to work on it. Uh, for example, on the support push and pull signature, I noticed a comment from Shiva saying, yep, we can start work on this issue seven days ago. So I believe the people who are working on it or who are supposed to work on it will start working on it. And uh, so this is what I see remaining uh, from the spreadsheet view that we need to complete on. So it's not a big list, uh, but I don't, I can't give a time estimate on it, but just looking at uh, 17 items here across seven or eight different implementers that we have going right now, I don't expect it to take too long. Yeah, I think uh, one of the things we were talking about is the, did the spreadsheet really capture everything? I think that's the yeah. point of making no. sure you and David kind of get in sync. Good point. Good point. So, so in that spreadsheet, I saw some items which I believe are related to items in the spreadsheet. So from a granularity perspective, I found some items which I will call as the related items to the spreadsheet. They are there as well. But most of this stuff is stuff which I will call as not required by the implementers, but probably required by David and I, for example. There are items with docs, like we have to complete some docs as an example. And uh, and so those are the items which are related to the items in the spreadsheet. But I but again, most of them are in progress or uh, or or docs related. For example, let's let's pick one. Document standard CLI help format. Yes, it was not directly in the spreadsheet. I, I get it, but it's a good thing to do. But let's decide not to do it and push it out of RC1. Is that a big deal? I'm just taking one as an example here. No, no, it's a good, it's a good thing. I think the piece is that the stuff that was in the look, it's like reading a book is what's fun because you can you people interpret books very different than a movie that basically tells you how to feel, right? So I think we were reading the spreadsheet with some 
perceptions around how we were thinking and things were listed. So part of what um, the merger of the spreadsheet and what Dave is trying to do with the scenarios is kind of capture the intent so that the work items that were in the spreadsheet are kind of grounded. So we kind of have a little bit more of the story that we're trying to enable as opposed to an interpretation of the line items in the spreadsheet. So it's just a balance of both of those. I, I, I agree. I don't think we're far off, but I, but I do think we were, I think the last couple of meetings have kind of shown we had different perceptions around how some of the stuff was <clears throat> together. So yeah. Just, we just got to figure out how to make sure we're capturing it. Yeah, I don't um, need that. For example, go ahead and yes. I was going to say that um, um, that may be just kind of more aligned to like, how do we um, potentially either group uh, some of these issues or tag some of these issues? Like if you want to have like a user story based approach that, you know, these issues are, or, or these changes are kind of tracking against these user stories. Um, that's definitely another way of doing it, but I, it's not clear to me from the tracker right now, um, which task is oriented with which what user story. Um, that's definitely not something I think um, is, is 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 reflective here, um, and I think it's it's this is more a question for sort of like you know David, you and Samir, um, in terms of going forward, um, how do we track um, um, some of the work that's being done here? Because um, I'd argue that you know for some of these user stories, like the the implementation work may already be done, um, but we don't have a clean mapping of user story to sort of like you know the functionality that's being worked on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree with that. As an example, I saw some items marked for RC1, which I know for a fact have been completed. And I think David, you picked up on it as well saying, hey, this should be included in RC1. And my response is that's already available in RC1. And I know I can point you to the exact specs as an example, but I did not close this on purpose because I wanted to, you know, because you had a question here saying to confirm if this should be included in RC1. And my response is yeah. it's already there. Right. Okay. So, yeah. Yeah. So that, yeah. So that one, uh, that one was one which, uh, these ones here, I, I think Shiwei and Finman po posted it on there. And I, I think if, you know, we're all being cautious on closing stuff, I really think that like we could just knock a ton of these out on the call and say, if that's done, if we're all in agreement, just close it. And then it'll, I mean, I think that'll, that'll make things go a lot, a lot smoother. I agree with that. I agree. Uh, so yeah, so we can use some time to close items which we believe should be closed and we can do this in a group setting. That's a good use of our time today uh, from a project management perspective. That's definitely something we can do. And then I also found some which I will call as a duplicate. Like maybe we created, uh, there were five duplicates I found like we have sign command already being tracked by a different user story. And then there's one more sign command uh like and then we have multiples for uh like uh, like somehow yeah with different teams working on it we have uh, yeah. duplicate items as well yeah so so i think there i mean part part of that again was just you know having the user stories and then having um the assignment of kind of the structure of the work it, if if we're all you know and i think this is also a confirmation of like okay well if we think we're happy with Note where notation sign is for RC1. Okay, well then let's all agree and we can close it. But if you know it, it was still ambiguous without that to know for sure, right? Because what what I saw a lot happening on the board was there was maybe a spec and there wasn't an implementation or vice versa, and like and then it was hard to know like the complete thing that adds value to the user. Like where does that like live and where is the status, right? Because on the spreadsheet we would have like. Yeah. One one item thing, and it would be confusing because was that part of it or not the whole story? Um, so that's that's maybe partly why you're seeing some of this here. Yes, agreed. And yeah, this was duplicate because I know there's a separate implementation command for signs still out there, and this is so there's more than one sign defined there. For example, we have a separate uh, command to define the sign experience spec separately, and a separate command for sign command. But I think multiple uh, people are looking at the same problem, and they have. So this is where uh, you and I can uh, probably prune things which have to be pruned. So if I go back to what uh, what I believe remains to be done, and we remove the duplicates and include the related, then this is the amount of work remaining. Um, for RC1 from the from the from from the perspective that we had been building for the last three months when we started with the spreadsheet saying let's align on 
pushing something out as soon as possible. And from that perspective, I, I believe we have a small set of work uh, for, for RC1. And again, the, the idea being once RC1 is released, there are no breaking changes after that. So with that perspective and with the urgency to push out RC1, I subject uh, us to be very careful about what we bring into RC1. And to that effect, I did notice some items that I don't belong, that I don't think so should belong in RC1. And I've tagged them for a different milestone called Discuss. And we, and we can use some time either today or on Monday to go through each one of those items, which I believe were incorrectly marked by one of us for RC1, but we shall you know, apply the lens of, the lens is get RC1 out as soon as possible. And with that lens, we can go back and look at those items we marked as Discuss. I would suggest a slightly different lens, Samir, um, okay. in, in, in the sense of like, you know, RC1 is, I think, a minimum set of functionality um, that would be needed um, to kind of go try signing out um, and verification out. Um, and these are changes that we have aligned on in the specs and there's no um, um, known sort of like risks in implementation, right? Because we'd also don't want to have a breaking change. So I think that's the part I would say we should do. Um, for everything else that's in discuss, I think it's worth kind of going through and applying that same filter and seeing if those things should belong in RC1 or not. Um, but I think, you know, given that, you know, this was just updated prior to the meeting, um, I would say we should probably look at, um, you know, making a case for each one of these um, to not belong in these buckets um, and come back and revisit that on Monday so we don't potentially um, end up spending um, the next hour here. Okay, right. So so this, so this, these are the items, Niaz, I marked for discuss. You're saying that's, we can do it on Monday. Is that what you're saying? I, I, th I agree. I, like, I'm not sure which items we're talking about here. So there's uh, we can either do like, that, talk about the discuss things that might have gotten retagged, but I also want to raise a concern around the balancing of, yes, we want to get something out people can test. There's some pretty substantial changes coming in in this, in this active work. I don't think it's realistic for us to assume we can do non-breaking changes on some pretty substantial changes we're doing. So I'm not saying we're not targeting an RC1. I would like to see the work that we've got in queue get some hands-on validation before we can commit to non-breaking changes. That sounds good. Uh, but let's, uh, we, we had planned for an alpha three any which way, and we were saying we love alpha three and RC1 if they're close together. So maybe we can look, relook at bringing back alpha three in, into scope. But yes, go ahead, you were saying something, sorry. No, I, I agree, but but I think um, um, we I agree with, with Steve's point, like, you know, we should go through all of these and have a chance to kind of like either push back on this tagging um, or agree with this tagging, right? And I don't think it's something that we can effectively do in the meeting today, right? Um, so we can come back to this on Monday in terms of are, there, are these tags correctly applied? Um, do any of us feel that any of these issues should be in RC1, in alpha, in different place? And I think that will be a much um, better agenda-driven conversation. Okay, so if that's okay, then I let me record this in the meeting notes that we will discuss these items uh, marked with the discuss milestone on Monday. Well, I wouldn't say it's just discuss milestones. So if anyone also feels that anything that's in RC1 shouldn't be included in RC1, um, if anything is is you know prior, RC1 or prior, and we feel strongly against it, I think that should be something um, that we can come back and chat about as well. Um, David, I also see if your hand raised. Uh, did you have? Yeah. So so I I I I guess two two things. Um, <clears throat> I still think it would be a good use of time. Um, for the items that we that Samir and I both are kind of feeling like I think these are done, um, where we're both hesitant to close uh, because we want to just make sure with the rest of the folks here that that we're good because I think that will help uh, quite a bit and I don't think we'll take very much time. So that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is um, the user stories that we have up there. You know we have a user story view, uh, so if you click on that, uh, Samir, like I think there's the RC one dash user stories. I think that will also like, I think help in terms of trying to, you know, align with what is the scope of what we want people to, to see. And it looks like maybe you've removed some of the user stories from RC1 that we had. Originally. Yeah, I marked. Yeah, I marked some of them for, so, discussions. for discussion. Yeah, 
yeah. yeah but so I, so I think that will help so so I think that will help um if 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 you're it's, it sounds like these four you're you're in rough agreement of um then maybe we don't need to discuss those so then I think if we only focused on the user stories as opposed to that full list of discuss items as the first priority, whether it's today or not, I think that would help a lot because that will help define a lot of the other things of, of the work that goes underneath it. Uh, does that make sense? Yeah, it does. It does. Uh, okay. That if we let's align on uh, the work that we are working on RC1, but I think that's the same discussion Niaz wants to have on, on Monday as well, saying let's take a step back, look at the items which have which are in their respective categories today and come back on Monday to see if we need to move their uh, milestone dates. Yeah, I, and I and I would, yeah, so, because I, I, I would say as well, like, I, I think if, you know, we, we from our my perspective, like we have a lot of changes, right, even right now um, that are are not really accessible through, through releases for people to try out and to build on. Okay. And so I would I would like to try and, you know, set set a target date. If, if it's an alpha three, um, fine. Um, so that we can we can at least try and align on on that. Um, and uh, as a, maybe a temporary step, if if you know RC one is going to be further out than let's say three weeks or something, two three weeks. You know. Um, but yeah. Um. Is that Anybody has any other thoughts on it? I want to look at what's else in the agenda and then we can come back and close the items, uh, David, that we want to close. Um, that, I think yeah. to, to David's point, I think it's fair to kind of go through the items that we want to close and cover that. Um, that does kind of reduce what we have to look at from between now and Monday. Okay, uh, we can do that. Uh, so for that, I think I can go back to your tracker or the, or the bigger tracker and just look at the comment section and in the comment section, pick up the items uh, that we had marked and saying uh, to confirm if we should close this. See what was the right comment to focus on on that one. Let me just scroll down and then pick up the right comment. Oh, to confirm if this is equal, uh, should be included in RC1 on no, that, it's not that comment. Uh, I think I put some of them with the close tag on them. Uh, the close doesn't work. Um, can I just search? Close. Uh, let's see. Okay, uh, let's look at uh, this. I think this is, oh, we already marked this done and done on these two. So the two that well, I was looking at, I have closed. What were the ones you're looking at, David? Yeah, I mean, you could say if the issue is open and the status is done, I mean, that's another way. Um, but yeah, there, there's, I think if we focus on like the alpha two and alpha three ones, that would be good regardless. Um, and you could kind of see, uh, okay. like for instance, ver verify JWS header content, right? Right, that right there, it shows it's open, and then I see status done. So that's like one to to look at, right? Okay, okay. So let's just finish the items of alpha two at least, uh, because that's something which we should have closed when we when we released alpha two back then. So let's fix that quickly. Uh, yeah, yesterday I did not have permission to close this, so I only marked it done there. Uh, I think Pritish, I was, uh, you and I were going through this and we said, yep, this is fixed. I can close this issue. Closing here. Okay, that's one down. Add more validations for timestamp response. Uh, this I believe is tied to a bigger item and I saw some back and forth on this one, uh, David. Uh, on how to look at timestamping. Uh, I think Shive was gonna look at timestamping over timestamping needs overall. So I was thinking if he can have a look at it. Uh, that was what we had decided in the uh, in the spreadsheet from our, from uh, hoping uh, who has the bandwidth to look at it uh, for timestamping and it was marked done. So I just wasn't sure what was done as part of that. So, I was hoping if you can chase this down with uh, uh, with with him on it. The roadmap issue has the exact history of what we want to get done for RC1. 
uh, which was that uh, nothing for verification, but uh, definitely for signing. Uh, so at least do the signing part so that we don't have a breaking change going forward. That was the discussion we had on this one. So that's the sec. So I'm not ready to close the second item in the tracker right now. Okay, so maybe we can just move it now to let's just say alpha three or something. Um, okay, we can do that. That way we can get rid of that. Uh, yeah, I'm wondering should we re tag things that were RC1 in, in alpha three to say what we want to get? Like, I, I'm worried that we don't have enough focus on what gets to pulled in so that an alpha three would be incomplete because things would be out of sync. Okay, let me mark it as an RC1 for right now uh, because we want to make sure RC1 doesn't go out without this change, whether it's an alpha three. Yeah, I think maybe we put things in RC1 then pull back from RC1 to an alpha three to consolidate what we want to get. Like, I wanna make sure we get the high risk, high change things in hands of people so that we could make sure that the experience and the functionality meets the bar that we wouldn't have any breaking changes on it. Okay. What I don't want to do is I don't want to not I don't want to not be able to make a fix that will be the right usability fix because we committed to non-breaking changes and we didn't get a chance to test it. Okay, and then we have this one tracking issue for pending feedback on some CLI commands. I think at this point we should just close this because any other CLI command fixes that we have to do, we will do as part of individual CLI fixes. If everybody is in agreement, I can just close this old. Yep. Uh, this is the one that was the PRA made, right? It was like just capturing the baseline. And then we, like, for instance, the login PR is the only active one I know that has um, individual changes based on the baseline. And then the, each one comes in. Yeah, but I'm not sure whether we have fixed all the items there. Okay. Uh, if that is the case, can I also move it to, well, what, what, what do so we my yeah, so my suggestion was on the comment down below there, um, because I, you know, I, there's a lot of things that are in here, and it's hard for me to know what is really resolved. And so I, I don't, I don't, I really am not a, unless this is like an actual, you, you know, user story thing, it seems like a lot of different, different item, random items. Um, like, I, so it'd be good for maybe Pratesh or someone to go through and know if some, if some of these are done or not. And then if whatever's left to actually just create separate issues for them, um, that way we can track them that way. I can yeah, do one that. big one is kind of hard to manage. Yeah. And we put links to those other issues in this one, like close this one with links to the individual other issues. This way it's, not a big bang individual action one. So we need an owner for this one then. Uh, we can't leave. Uh, okay, uh, let me come back to that. Support okay. signing certificate and certificate chain and configuration file. I believe this is done. Uh, when you say done, is that a PR that's merged or it's a, it's a PR that's in pending? Yeah, so if you look at it, like this was from September 10 to 2021. We have, I found lots of issues that we have since evolved our thinking and we have fixed them as part of a different issue. Uh, but let's ask uh, Rakesh and uh, Pritish because they are the ones who are working on uh, signing and verification part right now. If they believe this is closed. Uh, I don't know. I haven't seen because this signing identities is changed to Signing keys dot JSON. Um, I think this was the previous way in which key add worked. But does current one supposed to? Sorry, come again. Does current the current implementation of current spec support my uh, signing certificate chain? I'm not sure. There are a bunch of changes that have been, for example, Kim implemented the key add for plugin. Uh, we we haven't probably updated to signing keys.json. So we need we need to look at the implementation and so two questions. Uh if you want to support it this way, I think there are some issues with how that is represented. And is it working?
I will pose a different question, William. Like we have implemented uh, for RC1 signing and verification using search chains. Is there um, any this is this is this is more around. Can you specify them in the configuration file, right? Um, this isn't, I think, necessarily for the um, signing aspect of it. Why don't we come back to this one? This sounds like this needs a little bit of digging to see where we are um, in the implementation phase and whether there is a merged um, PR that addresses this. Um, can we add this to the agenda for uh, Monday uh, and assign someone to come back with an update? Yep. I yeah, I agree. I, th I think at a high level, this is from a PR feedback. It's a proposal, not a agreed upon feature. Okay, Nias, thanks for the help on that one. I moved it to discuss. Uh, let's look at the last one here. Any? Oh, this is the ability so that we can figure out which of the several different signatures from different entities um, are used without having to pull every signature. So this would support our, basically would support annotation filtering uh, from the registry. But if signatures are not in annotations any which way, and we are doing fil we are doing signature filtering any which way with Shiva working on it for RC one. Is this still applicable? Well, I, we're so, we're mixing two different things, right? The annotation is a hint to say this because remember we have data. The signature itself is in a blob, which is an extra call. It keeps the manifest small and it keeps the appropriate content when you need it. The, the problem is is we can might have three ten three or 10 different signatures by different entities. Wabbit Network signs it, then goes to Docker Hub, then it goes to Acme, and Acme might have two or three different signatures on it as they promote it through their environment. When they're trying to verify, we don't want them to have to pull every signature just to figure out whether it's the signature that they wanna verify. So the annotation was a, a generic way to say, this is the Acme prod signature. So then, then it gets pulled, it still gets verified just because it's an annotation that says I'm the one to pull. You still have to pull the blob and then verify it, but it does allow you to completely ignore the other seven signatures there that you don't even pull to verify. Got it, got it. Okay, that part I get now. So, but is this a RC1? We were not tracking it for RC1 earlier. Or is this a discuss item or, or you know I have this is where like having running the latest bits to see what's in there because I thought I remember something got in. Uh, so we have some kind of filtering for the same purpose where you don't have to pull all the signatures. We are doing filtering based on certificate hashes. <clears throat> so example, is the certificate hash in an annotation? Uh, yep, it's uh, it will be pulled from signature to manifest annotation. As long as there's something in the manifest that is an annotation, that's what's right. important. Because yep. what we're saying is registries don't know about any, as a general statement, registries don't know about any of the artifact types. So it doesn't know whether it's a signature, an SBOM, David's family photos. The idea that you could query a registry on generic properties to then hand it off to, to CLI specific implementations. So that's why, like, this is like the or as refers, ref, or as refers API that, you know, itself doesn't know anything about notary. Notary knows about or as, or as doesn't necessarily know about notary. So as long as we have something there, and is it, is it but is it a hash or is it actually have any kind of human readable? Well, it's a hash, it's a certificate hash. So basically, why, no, why would you use the certificate hash, not the thumbprint? It's a thumbprint, basically, my bias, like certificate hash and thumbprint. I'm just use, using those interchangeable term. It's a thumbprint of a certificate, short of the pro The problem I have to ask then is, how do you, how does the user know what certificate they have to continue to keep this mapping forever? Or like, I can't do an ad hoc yeah, query saying, hey, find me uh, Samir's certificates. Uh, may hang, hang on, can, can I do a timeout? Because from a particular... Yeah. Can I just part this discussion? It looks like this also has to be discussed. We need to get some more data on it. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm a little unclear with thumbprint or hash 
for certificates as an index and mechanism. Let me so, move it. Yeah, so discuss. Yeah. Okay, let's go back to our list. Did we clear out alpha two? I think we cleared out alpha two. Oh, I think we cleared out alpha two. Well, yeah, other than the the one that needs to be broken out. So that uh, Pratesh, if can you help with that? And that way, once you file the issues that are still left, we can close that issue and have the other ones assigned wherever for the tracking pending feedback issues in PR eighty three. Yeah, I can do that. Okay. Thank okay. you. I'll assign this to you right now. Okay. Uh, let's look at the remaining set of issues. For I mean, I want to do a time check here. We have yeah. other items to cover. Okay. I think yeah. alpha three is pretty simple. I'll, I'll just only need probably four more minutes for alpha three. I, I'm pretty familiar because alpha three is all the roadmap items. And uh, we can just, uh, in this meeting, I'm ready to close the items which are done and items which are in progress, I'm, I, I suggest we move them to discuss as well. For example, local storage of signatures is a, a item on the roadmap and I propose we move it to discuss as well. Uh, Samir, I'd be careful in how we're using the discuss tag. Um, the, the discussion that you're using the tag for sounded like you were talking about which release they should be in, right? Correct. Yep. Um, if we have a discussion around um, whether this is done or not done, but this is still staying within the same release, it'll be confusing if you move that to discuss. So I would suggest maybe having a label or something else that you're tagging with rather than moving this to um, whether this should be in alpha three or not. No, yes, this this is a specific one, which, uh, which we don't believe uh, uh, because there's an open discussion going on for a couple of, weeks on this one, if should be if, if it should be even in alpha three or, or RC one. So this is a good candidate for for discuss. We need to see way, uh, yeah. some questions regarding the caching behavior. So we can discuss okay. this on Monday. Okay. Yeah, I think the the local, I mean I think we've in a number of previous calls we kind of said uh, for the the RC one milestone uh, that we want to hold off on this because it's going to add a, a lot of additional work, but we're all in agreement that we need it. Um, and that it's super important. So, you know, I, yeah, I, I, am I, I'm just, am I echoing the same thing everybody's been talking about? Yeah, I think that's, are we on the same page and what local, I mean, can move the cursor, I can't read what it says there. Whoever's got their mouse over it. That's, that's Samir. Yeah, yeah. Local storage of sig. I thought we weren't doing local storage of signatures. This exactly. is the cache feature. This is for the cache, I think. That's the, all right, let's, can we defer this one to Monday? Yep. Yeah. Shoot, yeah. Shoot, he's on vacation. I don't understand what dependency he has on this. So I think it's, this work is probably already done. I think the difference is, I, I, I don't understand what this one. Okay. Why this then, is still active. Okay, then we will, Talk about it then, and this is the last one. Uh, I'll mark it for uh, everything else. Uh, I can work with the assignees and then close it. So, uh, Steve, you, I think, are trying to close on the CLI command specification, so that's marked for you. But everything else, I've marked already, and I can close those uh, items. CLI uh, command, I think, is if that line item, individual line item, is done because we put the baseline in and we said we we're going to split it out as to separate. Okay. Then I'll call it done, and we can just close that roadmap item, or we or, or we say we close that roadmap item after the individual items are done. Uh, okay, that's back to the user stories that you and David have to decide. Yep. 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 The okay. okay so the, the, there's signature manifest format, which I think we you and I, you and I Samir agreed that we think is done, but if we want yep. to just confirm real quick. Yeah, signature manifest closing. format. Ask the audience here. Uh, I. I I believe it is done. I worked with uh, British uh, Milland. Are you guys okay with me closing this roadmap item in the setting? We completed it as part of PR 158. I think probably annotations or some other things, if it comes up, we can add it. I think yeah. at my level, the signature manifest is described. Yes. Okay. I'm closing it in this roadmap item here. 
And then uh, same way with the uh, support for additional signature formats. This was us saying we want to design in that we can support additional signature formats from the get-go. So that work was completed as part of supporting media types. I think this is ready to be closed. If nobody disagrees, I want to close this. Mm -hmm. We can close this. Uh, let's get done. Uh, Signing plugin interface API spec. I believe this is completed as well, Milind. Uh, yeah, yeah, that is right. So, did you guys make? I, I lost track of a bunch of the PRs. Did you guys make updates to it based on some other on the verification stuff? Because I know that we did the signing verification plugin. Sorry, the signing plugin spec, and uh, Kim went and did all the work to put everything in sync. But did I see additional changes for this? No, this was the APIs. This was not the implementation. This was the spec part of it. That's what I'm saying. Did you guys make changes to the spec? Oh, no changes process? to the capability names. I think other change you might have seen would be that there are two signing interfaces, the signature generator and the envelope generator. If you can point to a PR, I can look at the details. Well, I'm just saying on that item, I'm not sure if the signing plugins Oh, I see signing versus verification plugin interface API spec. All right, we can move on. The, the individual PRs. Are okay. Fine. Yeah. So we have closed the done done items. I think the, these are the in progress items. If uh, Milan and Pratish, if I'm not representing your status correctly, I believe each one of these, uh, you still have some PR to complete to complete the spec. Yeah, the, the, that is accurate. Okay. All right, so that represents the correct status of alpha two and alpha three, uh, David. And then we can cede the floor if you're okay uh, to, actually, let's talk about these two. I noticed this milestone artifact RC1. I don't know if we, these belong. You can get rid of that. I, I thought I closed all those out. Okay, we can get rid of these. Okay, we'll get. Yeah, we were, I, I don't remember exactly why I have to go back and read. So, we, so we, wait, but are you are you wanting to close them or are you just wanting to move them to a different milestone? Uh, where there's the key show me where you're seeing it so I can see which items are. There's only to. two issues: key management TSAs and key discovery. I don't know why those are on artifact RC one. I agree. So this is a key discovery. And then this I, is the yeah, key discovery still isn't solved, so I don't think we should close that. I think it's actually right. a, it's just it's not it's just tagged yeah. wrong. Okay, yeah. So let's just let's just move it. Uh, I mean, I I guess. No. Well, I, I think uh, key discovery. If I understood it correctly, um, we may want to discuss some more. Um, I think that's appropriate to kind of tag as a discuss milestone. Okay. Um, I, I think just, this is the ones where it, we. Yeah. Yeah, where we had, um, I think we have some contention around how, um, whether how users discover um, trust um, stores should be in scope for notification or not. Um, and then um, the key management TSAs, um, I believe um, this one um, was something um, similar in terms of how those keys get managed and where they get stored or configured. And this might have already been addressed in the new, um, um, the trust store um, spec that we have out. Yeah, I, I just want to make sure we, there's a difference between a trust store exists and how do I configure a trust store, right? Like I get a signature from of an artifact and I'm trying to and I decide I want to trust it. How do I find out what the, where the public key is so that I can create a trust store? Yeah, and this was in the uh, notation. Discover what? No, not discover. What was the inspect? This is. I think we agreed. That's where we're going to put this in the notation inspect command. Okay. So can we just move it to discuss then for the? Yeah. Okay. This one as well. Okay. All right. I'm giving the floor back to Milan. Uh, I think we synced up on RC Alpha Two, Alpha Three, and discuss your parking for discussion on Monday. Okay. Uh, back to you, Milan. You can have the floor. I'm going to stop yeah, sharing. Yeah, can you stop sh screen share? I'm not able to take over. Uh, yep, stop sharing. Done. Um, 
think, give me a sec. Actually, can you share, I'm on the new system. Samir, can you share screen? I'm on the new system, I'm allowed to like log out, give Zoom permissions and- oh, sure. I can share, yeah, going back. You want me to bring up a, yeah, I can bring up your specific PR. Open. Yeah, yeah that one, the first one. First one, um, the first yeah. one, yeah. So I, so Roy, Steve, both of you are here. I wanted the, I'm bringing up items which are currently blocking the engineering team on spec. Uh, I wanted 10 minutes to be spent reading this PR. Basically the verification plugin and signing scheme PR had two concepts in the same PR. That is separated out now. All right, that is separated out now and uh, we discussed signing scheme previously in the COSI branch. If we can review that P this. So if we go to files changed. Key select. And signing scheme, that last file. I'm trying to keep up here, hold on. Click on the left. Yep, signing scheme, yep, last file. And go to the, you can convert to the rich text format there, yeah. Stiff. Yeah, if we can spend 10 minutes reading this, I, I mean, I don't expect approval here, but I want to address any high level questions in this meeting. So I, I don't know if you want to do it in line. My first question is I didn't understand the word default, why that was a, a, a scheme. Notary.x509, and that was the, one of the questions in the PR. Sure. So it's uh, the default is what is implemented where you can think of like that is the general scheme that everyone uses, where an end user does signing. And the uh, signing authority is where a third party service, a user, end user doesn't do signing. End user uses a third party service to do signing. I I think the way I would describe this is um, when we think about traditional um, code signing use cases, you are getting a certificate um, from um, uh, an authority, but the private key is in your possession, right? And so um, because the private key of the certificate is in your possession, um, there are questions around sort of like, you know, the when is the certificate actually being used um, and so to do that you're typically kind of doing things like you know calling out to a timestamp service to get that signature um, that's the traditional um, kind of like code signing format we have and i think that's what's described as default behavior um, a different way to do signing um, which is also described in sort of like the cat form guidelines is rather than um, managing a private key, um, you can also go ask a certificate authority to do a signing on your behalf um, through what's called a signing authority. Um, and so this is one where um, because the, the certificate key has been verified to be um, stored by an authority that can also kind of attest to its use within the proper time period, um, it has a less stricter implementation around like how um, timestamps and other aspects of key storage come in. So I think that's the distinction here, Milind. Um, correct me if I'm mistaken, is the distinction yeah, between, correct. yeah, like where were the- less, Yeah, when you say less stricter, it doesn't change any of the security guarantees. Yes, correct. So I, I think the piece that yeah. I'm tripping up on is just what, why is the word default in there? Like I, um, here's the name. I think the default just point. We, I think I was struggling with how to name this appropriately. This just why is it, you know, can it just be X509? I think any default, I'm just assuming, is a configuration, not a added, not a yeah, I, of the binaries of where we ship in any one release. I think that makes sense. The default may be misleading, as in this is what it automatically defaults to or something like that. I, I can think about naming it. I think conceptually, I want us to be on the same page of what, what these two things are. 
as I was, we were to as I was describing it, Milland, I think um, this really kind of goes back to where you get a certificate from, whether it's a certificate authority or a signing authority, right? Um, and I think we can extend the certificate authority to say a private CA is also technically a private certificate authority. Could we just call it certificateauthority.com, uh, .x509 for the first one? I had a couple of questions before you do that. Why would you ask a timestamp server for a key? You're asking them to generate a timestamp, not a... No, the, yeah, I think then it was inaccurately described. We are, we are asking TSS for key. TSA is just providing the counter signature. Right, okay, so that's one. The second thing here is the difference between you signing with a private key versus asking a signing authority to sign on your behalf changes when it comes to how you audit. And so that does play into uh, evaluation of trust. Do you guys think we're usually gonna gloss over that for the time being, or do you have thoughts there? Like, Can you get into a little more detail there on uh, the audit kind of dimension of this? My concern here is, this is what we, we see with SIG stories, yeah, they, they sign on your behalf, but prove to me that 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 Roy actually asked it to be signed is a gap. You know, you either rely on CT logs in that case, which means depending on the breadth of the CT log depends on how whether you trust them. I think, the uh, I think it's arguable that the signing authority model actually gives you a better I think Roy's question is slightly different. Um, yes. I, I, I think I agree with, 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 with what Roy is kind of pushing for here, which is like, you know, when you have described an authority, how mm -hmm. do you go ensure that the authority has done a certain set of practices or certain things that, you know, we expect them to do? Um, and I think, Roy, to that point, we really haven't gone and had discussions around governance, right? Like, we haven't really talked about, you know, even if we describe a certificate authority here or a signing authority here, um, what are sort of like audit practices and things that we expect from them to kind of go say, hey, you know, this is something that um, looks to have been done properly. I think this is something that um, we do want to kind of have a broader discussion around whether that is something we view as a notation discussion or potentially a discussion in open SSF or some other place where we kind of go say, if you want to trust these signing authorities or, or these certificate authorities or this time stepping authorities, here are the sort of guidelines that we would want to kind of go and have them follow. Um, for now, there is a description in the CAB forum guidelines of what is needed for each one of those. Um, I think it's a question for us and sort of like, you know, whether what's described in the CAB forum guidelines are things that we see are as appropriate um, sort of mechanisms for what notation um, would consider um, from a governance perspective as well. Um, but there's an important question here that we are, um, we haven't quite addressed, which is where does the governance aspect of this um, sit? I think that is, uh, yeah, what you said is correct. The concern is valid. I, I question if this is the correct forum in terms of CA, CAP forum CA guidelines are applicable mainly to public CAs. Private CAs, et cetera, are free to implement CA practices as per their requirement. So signing authorities, again, there's currently no concept of like public signing authorities. It's a new space. So I, I wouldn't, other than recommendations, but, I wouldn't want but, notation to kind of lay out guidelines. But it isn't really a new space because SIG store is already there, right? Well, I think what what let's what what I would push for here is that um, yeah, um, Sixter has yeah Sixter mm -hmm. has punched in a lunch a lot of things in in their discussion which I don't agree with. Um, yeah. I don't know that the implementers should necessarily also be the governing body, right? That's a fundamental I think uh, discussion to be had here. Right, that's fine. I, I don't know whether we need a call out or something, but equating both the same assurance at the moment seems suspect to me. One where somebody signs the, and they have a private key versus asking something to sign on their behalf from the end user's validation point of view, those are completely you know, glossed over a huge problem space. 
Um, I think the way I would look at this is sort of like, you know, what is the trust model that we are assigning and where's responsibility going, right? Um, this yeah. is going yeah. with the with the model that the trust of kind of maintaining, um, if you're trusting an authority to issue you certificates in the first place, um, and they are also holding on to keys, it's giving you the, the guarantees of like, you know, a timestamp authority and a certificate authority and a single authority, which is the signing authority. That's typically how the approach has gone in the CAB forum. Um, and so that's kind of like the um, um, the assumption we want to work forwards on. Um, there is a larger question, and that applies for any kind of signing or any kind of certificates you're getting, is what is the authority itself um, subject to? So I think that's a, a governance discussion we can we can park for now. I think in, in terms of the trust model, Roy, the difference is uh, in, the, the, in the plain X509, a verifier says, I trust the signer's CA and a particular signer public key, signer. Yeah. Public yeah, there's key. a second part of that, which is the way those certificates are issued is the private key never leaves the user's control. So if it gets compromised, it's a, a right. So in, so in, But that's a, a different story of certificates are maintained in the cloud. And I ask, you know, if I can't audit the fact that to prove that, that Roy actually made the request, that's a big, leap for a lot of people right so that i i, I think you're, you're you're touching upon the details of how the signing authority okay that, that's fine i'm just saying hey equating the two of them to be equal i think is highly suspect at this point until we do a lot of write-up of how we think that's going to work well, I think uh, there's a middle ground here that we can do in which we kind of define how we how we define a certificate authority versus how we define a signing authority. If the signing authority is defined as someone that um, can demonstrate that they have, you know, um, ownership of a private key throughout, um, and you can give that auditability, that's really what you're you're pushing for, right? Right? Like there is some auditable mechanism that shows that this private key could not have been used outside of the uh, the signing authority's knowledge. And the fact that the who asked for it to be used is the is the other half of it. Yep. So, so that you're talking about how the signing authority implements its authentication and its practices. Which well, I, no, I no, 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 no. I think Niaz is correct. It's from the end user's perspective. He wants to know that that Roy actually asked for the operation to be done. Whether the the signing authority did the work. If unless you can prove it, it's useless. Where's the definitions for? Um, uh, did we have a definition, Millant, of what a signing authority or a, um, a local I authority? Think the, would... the the basic definition here is that the signing entity or an end user trusts signing authority to generate signatures on its behalf. I would. And there's a verifying entity that also trusts the same signing authority. I would expand the definition of trust here is that, you know, there's a um, auditable mechanism that shows how the um, the keys have been used, right? Like, I think that's how, what we're, where the distinction here is, is that um, we've kind of think, packed that definition yeah, into I think trust. Some of that makes sense, but I, I want to draw a line there that like how that, that, May, we may have general guidelines, but those are details of how a particular signing authority implements this. Different signing authorities may have different authentic Where, schemes, auditing schemes. I don't think the 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 um, the schema itself needs to be called out here. Um, I think just the auditability aspect that it can be audited is what we what, what is what Roy is pushing for. Roy, uh, oh, tell me if I'm yeah. mistaken there. I, 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 truly, I, yeah, I think that's the call out here is to believe in trust. In a signing authority, you need to, to, to we need to discover or just talk about auditability later, right? And I, I'm fine with putting that in here, but making the basic statement that they're equivalent, I think without that is pretty highly suspect. I can add that. Um, and, and I'm not trying to be argumentative. I, I just like to, to make sure when people read this, they go, okay, now I understand how they're making this leap. Right. I, I think what I was getting tripped on is notation doesn't have a mechanism here. It's, uh, it's no, it would, it would not be a notations problem. It would be yeah. the signing authority has to be able to prove that I yeah. asked. And, 
until you have that guarantee, you can't equate the two of them as equally trustable. Yeah, that, that makes sense. I can, I can update the wording. Uh, any other and, questions? The other thing is the trust store is segregated out for the signing authority. There is another open issue in that regard, which is, is how do you know that the signing authority doesn't change its policy and weaken its audibility is something that, that might be make sense on the FAQ. Like, is there any contract with a signing authority that if they change their, their policy that they have to broadcast it? I think that also kind of falls more into like the governance aspect, yeah, yeah. right? Agreed, um, agreed. And, yeah. And that's why I said, does it belong in the FAQ? I think the FAQ can have like a question that says like, you know, what happens um, in, in these scenarios? And I think this is where we kind of, you know, if you go back and look at, um, I, I use the analogy of like the CAD forum guideline, like, you know, CAD forum established some guidelines, um, but these are all kind of like, you know, dependent on self audits and self reports. And whenever there are misses or things that are kind of found that usually ends up in some form of distrust or some something happening, right? And so right now, because we don't have the aspect of like a notation, curated set of trust stores, right? It's really up to the end users to kind of decide whether the signing authorities and certificate authorities they're using are meeting their, their requirements. I think that when we start kind of looking at, do we start shipping uh, trust stores, so public trust stores as part of notation? What does that process look like? What's the entry process? Those are some great places to go have these types of questions or what are the audit requirements we'd potentially have um, for you to be like a publicly trusted um, signing authority or a, um, um, certificate authority as part of uh, notation. Yeah, I agree. Any other questions? Steve? Yeah, I just I put the, um, the question about expiry being critical in the, the discussion we had there. Expiry, can you? I, sorry, I put it in the chat session. Basically, we had that um, issue 141 where we're discussing expiry because I, I, I struggle with this model that it's you're, where there's a forcing to go back and validate if a signature expiry is, is not, not critical. In the, in the example, so this is just updating a previous peer. Expiry is optional, but if, it is, if present, it is critical. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, uh, Samir is highlighting this action. So in the example, we are showing that expiry, because expiry was present in the signature, it ended up in the critical headers. Roy, are you still there? Or are you feeding your dog who's howling at the moment? I couldn't help but smile when I kept on hearing it. Um, Okay, so it's not, not it's only critical, it became critical because you added it in that particular yes. signing form. Yeah, yep. Be because you you expressed that you wanted the signature to have a expiry. Okay, yes. I see that. Um, that's why I just deferred to Royal I, I was missing something else there, but that makes sense. All right, I had to go pick up a puppy. <laughs> that's what I was figuring. <laughs> You're starting to squeak, so. All right, I think. Uh, I'm, I'm not hearing anything else. I will update. Uh, well, there is something else. I do yeah. want to make sure we bring in the, the conversation around the cozy work that we were discussing. Oh, no, no, I, I meant on, on this topic. Okay, yes. I have- Sorry, I was looking at the clock. Another PR, I'll ping that directly to you, Steve. The multiple trust stores, custom verification policy. I addressed your comments. That is ready for- Sweet. Role. Uh, again, that is blocking engineering, so would want that PR also to be uh, reviewed. Uh, we can get to the we can get to your topic and on the verification plugin. Uh, based on feedback from you, Roy, etc., the discussions that we have been having, uh, I think I'm going to address some of those in the PR itself as a separate section, uh, and we can discuss that on Monday. Okay. So I did have the question there, Melinda, is, is how far reaching do you want me to, to, to make the questions that you have to address to help you improve it? Or do you just, are you guys pretty locked with what you have? 
Um, feel free to put in like all the feedback that you have. Okay. I'll there do that. Maybe some like future looking or areas where we want to expand further, like the audit, etc. Yeah. I'll try to put in whatever I can, and I, I might even create issues for things that we feel we must address and track to completion. Yep. Okay. Perfect. Yeah, I mean, like, like generally, uh, Roy, Steve, everyone, like, I, I'm getting a bunch of critical feedback on different PRs. Like, all of those have been useful. So, yeah, don't hold back on. <laughs> yeah. No, these yeah. are all fruitful discussions. Look, it, it, some of the discussions are the details, and, like, you know, and some of them are like, wow, I hadn't thought about that um, across the board. So, you know, look, this is what we said from the beginning is we have very much the same customers in many places. We have different, slightly different perspectives on it. And that's what's making the solution better is because we're positive, actively collaborating on a common goal with a diversity of experiences. So I, this is awesome. We can move to your topic, Steve. Uh, I'm done. I, we're at 10. I just wanted to... I, we, I just wanted to make sure when we talk about the user stories, just as a reminder, when we were talking about landing RC1 at the end of June, then you know like we're way past that. And that is part of the problem is that we agreed to move the cozy work out to a future milestone, um, but it is time-based for us. So now that we're mid-July and yes, we're hoping to close down, um, we do really need to bring the, this cozy work in because it is critical for our uh, use cases, just as I know the verification stuff is critical for you guys. So. Um, we did get the security review done. Um, I did post that in the uh, issue um, and we cut an RC1 of Go Cozy also. The only reason we didn't release Go Cozy as a 1.0 yet is because we want to make sure that the verifications of implementation don't surface new issues. We did the same thing with the uh, Aura's artifacts spec. We believe we're done, but until people actually start implementing it, we don't know. So um, I just wanted to bring that back up that that is something we really want to we, we need to revive on our priority list. Yeah, I think Steve, I would kind of um, rephrase what you said as like, you know, I don't think it was a time concern that pushed Cozy work out for us. I think it was more a concern around sort of like, you know, where Cozy as a project is and whether it was ready um, and a good time for us to kind of go pick it up. Um, I noticed you put some updates in the issue in that's something, you know, we can go take a look at and, and kind of share some feedback and say, yes, we believe Cozy is ready for uh, implementation in, go, in, in, in notation or whether we feel there's something else that's left. But we'll get some feedback for you on that issue by Monday and we can bring it up uh, on Monday as sort of like, you know, whether um, this is something that we'd want to get included in RC1 or not. Sounds good. Just, yeah, just one, one kind of um, thing I'll throw out there as an idea to ponder, which we don't need to lock on right now. Um, I kind of hinted at earlier, but I'll be more specific. I would, I would say I'd like to propose us to like lock on a, time-based milestone by the end of this month, whether we call it alpha three or whatever. Um, and then at that point, um, I think that will help us to, you know, work in the, the other, the cozy and other things. Um, so I'll just make it, let all, everybody sit on that. Uh, I think, for yeah. yeah, I think that's a good discussion to have as soon as we kind of finish this curation um, process. So if we get through all of the issues on Monday and we have them properly clacked, tag for like, yes, this is RC1 versus not, we can then make an assessment of how far out RC1 really is um, and whether we want to cut an alpha release and what's blocking us versus do we want to just punt things to RC2. So I think if we, um, there right now is, it's great we've put all these things in, but because they've come from so many sources, I expect there to be some contention we need to drive through. Um, and so if we can close on that, I think we have a very realistic view of what's left versus um, how much effort we want to do. And um, again, as long as there's no breaking changes, um, we, I think we may be comfortable even pushing certain things to RC2, knowing that there's more discussions to be had there. Okay. Are we targeting that for Monday? 
Um, there are a lot of issues to discuss. So I would say latest by Thursday is where I would estimate, depending on how many things we need to discuss on Monday. Um, but either Monday or Thursday next week, I think we should be able to close on that. It would be nice to have a list of, of which ones we're going to discuss and sort of time box them. Otherwise, yes. we're not going to get through them. Yeah, and I mean, I, I think that I mean the big the big one is like instead of diving into the technical implementation details, it's more of like is this important for the milestone or not? I mean, because, and then that way it, it helps speed things up, right? Yeah, I think based on the current classification, what we should be discussing on Monday is if folks feel that anything does not belong in RC1, that's in RC1, bring those up. If folks feel anything that's in discuss should be in RC1, bring those up. Um, and I would say let's add those to the agenda so we have some time to kind of formulate opinions on it before we jump in. And to Roy's point, I think we can time box each one to like, uh, you know, three or four minutes as to whether it warrants a further discussion or not. I would definitely love to get that closed next week because the week after that, I'm gonna, gonna be busy at the IETF stuff. Yeah, I just, and engineering, yeah, to, to Malin's point earlier, engineering is got all this stuff kind of backlogged. So the more we can, unclog the log jam um the better will be thank you everyone i have to go to another meeting thanks folks me too